The Quran is not just an information textbook. It is rather an experience that has to be lived. This is evident in the life of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. When his wife was asked about him, she described him as a living Quran. Today is Ramadan day 11, marking the 11th episode of our series Why I Need the Quran. Join me as we look into the people of the Quran. Who are these people of the Quran? What is the concept behind the people of the Quran? Are we amongst them but we never knew? Have we been claiming to be amongst them but all this while we were wrong? The Messenger said in a hadith that indeed Allah has his people amongst the people. And it was asked, who are those that are the people of Allah whom are amongst the people? And he replied, those are the people of the Quran. Those are the people that are close to Allah. You know, close just as amongst the people, we have family members and we have friends. We have acquaintance and then we have just strangers that we see that are just people like us. The most closest to us are our family followed by our friends, then our acquaintance, then the strangers. That is it. The people of the Quran to Allah are like his family members. Upon hearing this, it seemed like a no-brainer to say the people of the Quran. Yeah, this should just be the people that recite the Quran often. And you could easily put someone in that spot. Perhaps someone in your family Perhaps someone in your school you have come across, you've heard of, or even yourself. And so you would say, these are the people of the Quran. However, that isn't the case. Recitation of the Holy Quran is part of it undoubtedly. But it goes deeper than that. It has to be too. Both the recitation and the implementation of the teachings of the Quran is what makes you amongst the people of the Quran. Have you ever come across someone who has memorized the entire 60 hisps of the Quran, which is the entire Quran, or has at least memorized 40, 50 hisps of the Quran, yet has one of the worst relationship between him and the deen? or even his mu'amalat with the people on earth? This is it. This is how people define Hafiz the wrong way. You see parents bragging about how their children have memorized a lot or the entire Quran and you cannot even wait to meet this child because it's like there is an angel in this house. Just for you to meet them and for the first 30 minutes of your interaction, you could just sense how far away this person is from the Quran, from their language, choice of words, to how they dress, to how they interact with others and even other creations of Allah and how they interact with the same Allah and the deen in general, you know this person have zero connection with the Quran. It is just the song of the Quran in his head. Apart from that song, there is no connection whatsoever. For you to be an Ahlul Quran, that is one of the people of the Quran, a person of the Quran, you must have recited, learnt the Qur'an, recite it, reflect about it. If you don't reflect about what you are reciting, that is when you do not have the connection with the Qur'an. And if you don't have that connection with the Qur'an, it is almost impossible 
or very, very hard for you to ever practice the Quran or the deen properly. The Sahabas, the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, these are those whom have lived with him, have never been in haste as we have always been in haste to complete the Quran. Just, I have finished it, the Quran. Now, now, now. My child, he is just nine years old, but he have completed the entire Quran. And that is all. Now he has time to focus on his Western education. They were never in a haste to say, I have finished the Quran now, now, now. No, it wasn't a matter of let me just finish. It was a matter of let me learn how to recite this. Let me understand it and let me be able to implement it before I move forward. And that is why you see some Sahaba spend 14 years, 10 years, 5 years on one surah. You would see a Sahaba pray the entire prayers. He could pray for an hour long, but he is reciting just one verse. Why is that? Are we smarter than them? Remember that amongst them are some of the Sahabas that were sent outside to go and learn an entire language. And they learned in like a week, a person would have learned Hebrew. In a few days, a person would have learned a certain language. Are we in any way brighter than them? We were never. We, we have never been brighter than them and these people are never dull at all remember that the quran was not written they most of the time memorize it by heart so they were never dull they were very bright people it was deliberate and that is because they were taking it one at a time they want to reap the benefits of it when you recite something over and over again it isn't just about the melody it's about the message what is it even saying okay so how can i implement this in my life you would see a sahaba come to the prophet learn one verse and go until months later before you see him come to learn another verse why is that he is sharp enough to have completed even if it is within a month memorize one verse but after the memorization he would make sure he begin to implement the teaching before he comes back for a second second one why don't we do that these are the people of the quran because they are not just singing it has sunk deeper than we know in their hearts and that is why the quality of islam then is uncomparable to the quality of islam now knowledge is easier to find now we have a lot of hafiz now so why are we not even a quarter compared to them? Because even the Quran say, do you know that the quality of your paradise and their paradise is more likely not the same? Because of why? In the Quran, in Surah Al-Waqi'ah, it is mentioned that there are two sets of people. There are two ranks of people people that will enter paradise there is the ashab yamin and there is the muqarrabun the muqarrabun are the forerunners they are the vips they are the ones with the highest status they are the dwellers of paradise another set is the ashab yamin they are also dwellers of paradise but they have not reached the vip status and they are not of the highest rank the things that differentiate them of Christ is some of distance, the quality and not the quantity, is the quality of Islam in them, how they practiced and nothing more. So it's about the quality and not the quantity. We can never undermine the quantity. You memorizing the Quran up to that quantity, even if you don't know what you are saying, that effort, it takes dedication, it takes hard work for you to be able to memorize it. 
the average Muslim who has not memorized up to your level can never be comparable to you, at least in that aspect. But you also can never be compared to the one who has taken steps further to understand, reflect upon what he is reciting and implement it in his life. And these are the people of the Quran and these are the people of Allah. And when you are the person of Allah, you should sure know that there are a lot of benefits that comes with that. For sure Allah would by default love you and read about the benefits of Allah loving you. When Allah loves you, a lot of things happen. One is other good people would love you and the angels would love you because Allah would put your love in their hearts by default. Apart from that, Allah said that he has declared war between him and the one who touches the one that he loves. Even if it is your mom or your dad or your teacher or someone in authority that backs you that way, you know you have something. If the president of Nigeria today says that he loves me, so he is at war with anyone who touches me. Don't you think I have an edge in this Nigeria? And people wouldn't touch me easily because I'll have protection aforehand. And even if something happened to me later words, these people can never go scot-free and so many other benefits. Don't you want it? May Allah make it easy for us to become the Ahlul Quran so as to reap the benefits of becoming the Ahlul Quran. I mean, see you tomorrow, inshallah. Bye.